Hi and welcome to the Coin Bureau. My name is Guy and in this video I'm going to give you exactly what you need to know about Anchor. But a few things before I start. We are never paid or mandated to complete any of our reviews. We're research analysts who present our views which are to be used for educational purposes only. I'm nobody's financial advisor and this is not financial advice. And one more thing. If this is your first time at the Bureau, then you may want to tap that subscribe button as I'll be sending out many more of these daily videos. Anyways, back to Anchor. Anchor is building a cloud computing platform that will utilize idle computing resources at edge devices and data centers. So a distributed computing platform where consumers will be able to access cloud resources far more affordably and enterprises will be able to monetize their spare computing power. They want to be a decentralized version of the large cloud computing services such as Amazon's AWS, Microsoft's Azure, or Google's Cloud. However, there are also a number of other competitors to Anchor in the blockchain space. So what makes it so unique? In order to answer that, we have to take a closer look into the technology. What makes the Anchor network unique is it is one of the first to use trusted hardware to ensure security at enterprise levels. They're using Intel SGX as the main technology component, which allows for the execution of applications within the hardware itself. This technology is more secure against certain hardware and software attacks since it processes certain executions inside the hardware. Of course, this could limit the number of users that are able to run a verification node on the network. This hardware ain't cheap. However, the Anchor team is of the view that this will increase the security on the network as the monetary commitment could be a disincentive for malicious actors. So we'll have to see how this plays out. When it comes to the blockchain itself, they use a proof of useful work consensus mechanism. Essentially, validator nodes will take part in block propagation on the network. The team hopes that by using these special nodes, quality of the network can be maintained and bad actors can be removed. Anchor will also utilize a reputation-based system when it comes to choosing these validator nodes. And in order to facilitate off-chain data and processing, there is a native Oracle system that transfers between the on-chain smart contracts and off-chain data. Oh, don't worry if any of this is confusing to you. We've linked our complete review of the project below if you'd like to look into it more. Now, in order to power the Anchor network, the Anchor utility token is used. Anchor will be used to pay for computing power to those who are providing it. Now, here is the slightly confusing part. There are actually three token types. Firstly, you have the ERC20 variant, which was issued on the Ethereum blockchain, as well as a BEP2 version, which was issued on the Binance chain. Then, as of July 2019, you have the native token that was issued on the mainnet launch. This is the token that is used to participate on the Anchor network. All of these token types are live, although only the ERC20 and BEP2 tokens are traded on the open market. The team hopes that this could increase liquidity, although it does muddy the waters somewhat. Anyways, Anchor held an ICO back in September of 2018, and they were able to raise about $18.7 million in both a private and a crowd sale. This was in exchange for 35% of the 10 billion token supply. Anchor tokens were sold at about 0.6 cents in the public portion and 0.3 cents in the private portion. So, so far a decent return on investment. So, who is the driving force behind the project? The Anchor core team is made up of 16 members, many of whom are graduates of the University of California they have a strong background in engineering and technical disciplines, and some have limited marketing experience, with a few who have successfully created and sold other businesses before joining Anchor. This team has been quite busy working on the protocol, something that you can confirm by jumping into their GitHub repositories. There are also several partners and advisors who have provided commercial and entrepreneurial expertise to the project. Now, Let's take a look at the Anchor markets, shall we? Anchor is currently listed on a number of different exchanges. This is probably as a result of having those two different token types being actively traded. 
The largest volume is currently taking place on Binance, and there are healthy turnover levels on these order books, which bodes well for the liquidity of the token. So easy execution. In terms of wallet support, that really depends on the type of token that you hold. ERC20 tokens can be stored in any wallet that supports Ethereum, whereas BEP2 can be stored in those that support BNB tokens. If you want to take part in the Anchor network, then you will have to convert your ERC20 or BEP2 tokens into their native token. Currently, the only place that you can store this is in their proprietary wallet, which is available on Windows. So, what do I really think of the Anchor network? Well, distributed cloud computing is no doubt an interesting use case for blockchain technology. There is a large bank of idle resources that is just sitting unused at data centers and homes all around the world. Anchor is also a pretty unique project in the sense that they have also focused on a hardware solution to power the network, something that other blockchain computing platforms have not. There is also a pretty strong team behind the project, and they have been actively working on the protocol. Now, having said all of this, there are still a number of challenges that lie ahead. The project is still only in the initial stages, and there are a number of other cloud computing blockchains that are further ahead. These include the likes of iExact and Gollum, etc. Also, although their hardware solution is unique, it does exclude a large population of people from operating as a node on the network, and hence could hamper decentralization. It'll be interesting to see how things pan out once they have fully released their protocol. And that's it, folks. But before you go, what do you think of the Anchor Network? Have you got any questions for me? I'd love to know in the comments and feedback below. And if this video is helpful, then let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing. You won't want to miss any more of our juicy reviews.